we have in our Edwin Elder Library, our, our home library. And I was going to show in here, if I probably won't open right to it, but there is like a whole bunch of different, um, I thought it was this book, probably not. Just, well, it just shows like the little precision things, how you use it to make exactly right. And I would love to have this barn. I would love to have a barn or a little shop to put my quilts and stuff in. Maybe have a few um, reci music recitals or something in. Be a lot of fun. But one of these days we might have a barn or a shop, some some kind of thing that we can use. But anyway, that's that's um, some of the tools that you'll find in the carpenter shop are measuring tools, cutting tools, both hand saws and machine saws, drills, planes, sanders, scrap wood, hardwoods, patterns, etc. Mark six and three said, "Is this not the carpenter?" Well, first, before I get switch over to the most important part of my message, Jesus, I'm only going to show a few of these pictures. This is the bread box I was talking about about my cabinet, and inside of it I have seasonal things, but you can see, you probably can't see on here, but up at the top is a bunch of holes drilled for the bread, you know, um, bread box required holes. And he made a whole series of cuts that he bent. See how the wood is curved? This is, shows the edge, how he made it so perfect and that spot right there it fit perfectly there at the edge of my my you know how mobile homes have those long countertops shiny countertops well that's where that was and we had bar stools around that and then it just shows different shelves and one year they made a cross that we used in one of our programs and we have that in the library this was our family altar and it's made out of lighthouse um, is a puzzle that the whole family put together and then it's under glass, and of course that's on four legs. And when it's set down right, it's it's our family altar. But right now I've got it setting up like this, and it's it's just in our closet. Well, you can still see it through the closet glass doors, but it's not being used as a table or an altar at the moment. So on to, on the very top of it, I do have prayer cloths, and um, I think I have something else laying up there. But anyway. So it is kind of still an altar, but it's not, you know, you know, around it right now. Some of the other things that he has made, um, like I said, bookshelves, and these was just close-ups to show how they were, the hint, how he had joined it together with the wood glue. And um, my dulcimer, my Tennessee music box, this is part of it. Um, they made it, they made me um, picture frames. Like I said, these I'm trying to I'm going to try to put together a slideshow, and if I could put together a slideshow, you see these pictures for my daughter Melanie's reception. They made a a stand that uh, in the kind of in the shape of a cake had the larger one, uh, medium size, and then the smaller one at the top. And uh, there's also holes drilled in that as um, for suckers can be lollipops can be stuck in there, or um, or they can just be having set. You can just set things on top of it. And there's the, the jewelry box that he made in shop class. And this right here is um, a, it's a three, it's like a, it's a three folded thing. It's got um, pegboard and stuff that I can hang all my craft things. And this is, this is on the side and on that one side of the pegboard I, I did um, a yo-yo quilt. And at the top it just shows that there's shelves up there that things can set on. And... Uh, right here is, it was, my father-in-law made tambourines, actually, in the shape of this for the um, the kids to use in the broken lamb drama. And th this one is the same thing that he made for everybody else, that they didn't put the timbrel things on it. And it sits above my door over there, and the Star of David. And, and then, of course, right behind me, my husband and I, we made that um, for our backdrop, the cloven times of fire, as a fire. So that's some things. And I wrote this um, song and poem the other day. It's called The Terms of the Carpenter. I was reading the Bible about long ago when Jesus walked upon the earth and lived among men. Some didn't understand his master's design and asked, is this not the carpenter? He could build and fashion out of this world. He could make beauty that was so fine. He could perfect and finish every project he made. This wonderful carpenter divine. But as I was reading about Jesus, Mark 6 and 3 says, Is this not the carpenter? They knew that he could do wonders with wood. 
But what was these miracles he was doing with flesh? He was going around healing people, and they did not understand, and they were full of unbelief. Matthew 13, 55 says, Is this not the carpenter's son? Jesus' earthly father, Joseph, was a carpenter by trade, and the occupation was passed on to the son. By the time that a son was 12 years old, he already knew a trade. They took on the trade of their father. They marveled that someone with an humble beginning could do miracles and great things. Jesus, I added this as a note in here, Jesus being our heavenly father and we being his sons and daughters, we should carry on the family trade, going about doing good, carrying on that tradition. Um, I don't usually have all this many papers, but today because I did the, a lot of the pictures, it turned out to be seven pages. So, Salvation is often compared to the potter shop. Oh, seven, God's perfect number. But salvation is often compared to a potter shop. You know, we're talking about carpentry, but also potter shop. Jesus being the potter and putting us the clay on the potter's wheel. No matter if we use the comparison of a potter or a carpenter or a refiner or different, you know, there's different examples throughout the Bible. The Lord is creating us and molding us and making us to line up to the plans he has for our lives. The only plan of salvation is the same no matter no matter who we are, if we're made of wood, if we're made of stubble, if we're made out of clay, if we're um, the different, and if he's trying us like pure gold, he's still, we've got to obey the same. Jeremiah 18, 1 through 4, and I'm talking, um, is what the passage is, but I'm going to read verse 3. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. Verse 4, and, that, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Lord, mold us and make us after your will, God. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs 25 and 4, Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. That's what we talked about just a minute ago. He's refining us. He's making us what we ought to be. They said that that when the, the silversmith, he'd get that fire so hot and that silver would be liquid and the stuff would come up to the top and he'd skim that off to get it off, to get that dross, to get that stuff out. And we just talked about the potter. He had, there would be clay that was marred and he'd have to throw it away and get new. And in the carpenter shop, a lot of times they'd go, they think that's a perfectly good piece of wood and they'd get down and then that hit against the knot. Or something in it and it would just totally ruin that piece of wood and have to discard it and get another piece or work around it make something else out of it maybe they were going for a big table or something they ended up having to make something small with the good part of the wood they tried to always use everything that they could but we second timothy 2 and 20 and 21 vessels of gold and silver but also of wood and of earth and if you go into the house, the master's house, you'd see all these different vessels. Some was made of gold, some was made of silver, but some was made of wood, We're talking about the carpenter shop today, and of earth, pottery. A vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, whatever the master needs to make us, and prepared into every good work. We must be pliable, and broken, and submissive to the master. This is why we must obey and repent. To repent means to turn away from our old sins, to die to the old creature, to be baptized in Jesus' name and come up a new creature in Christ Jesus. Acts 2, 38 and 39, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. See this right here? This is the obedience. This is the plan. This is what we're going to do to become those vessels of honor. And just like Joseph had an occupation of a carpenter, Jesus took on that. We're going to get repent and be baptized in Jesus' name, and so are our children and our children after this. Every generation, as for me and my house, will serve the Lord. It goes on generation. Um, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Psalms 51 and 7, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. That's what's happened when we repent. We're getting purged. 
And when we get washed in the water, get baptized in Jesus' name, it's going to make us whiter than snow. Verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Our old spirit's going to be replaced with his spirit, his Holy Spirit. We're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. See also verses 11 and 13 of Psalms 51, if you read that. It all goes along with that. About him cleansing us. Well, find a church in your area that preaches the truth. You know, you need to find one that will preach the truth, this obedience unto Acts 2.38 and walk it and live in a holy life. You can find a church using your locator under resources on http worldwideweb.upci.org and learn more about my husband and I at hazelwoodusa.weebly.com. I love you and I hope that this has spoken into your life today. You have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.